Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven shall enter the kingdom of heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. My dear friends in Christ, today the church gives to us for our meditation and contemplation A warning from our Lord to beware of false prophets. Oftentimes people look at this and they look around and say, okay, who's the false prophet around here? Miss so-and-so, she looks like a false prophet, Mr. So-and-so. And I think it's important for us to look at ourselves, to make sure that we are not false prophets. And we're not talking about prophets in the general term of telling the future or those type of things, but prophets, witnesses. We are called to be witnesses of Christ. We are called to promote Christ in our life. What does a false prophet do? A false prophet promotes self. When our Lord is talking about fruit, by their fruit you will know them. This is where we check ourselves. What do I leave in my wake as I go through my day? Do I leave turmoil and controversy, frustration and agitation, anger and uncharity, gossip and slanders, lies and jealousies, impurities, Because we are not being witnesses to Christ when we are of this. St. Paul talks about this in the epistle. You have a choice. Are you going to be slaves of sin or are you going to be servants of God? And that's a choice that we all must make and we all must examine ourselves honestly. It's easy to point at our neighbor and to find fault in our neighbor because we have, all of us, have a fallen human nature. It's only when we identify our own fallen human nature that we can point to our Lord as our Savior and our Redeemer. But usually when we're pointing at other people, we're distracting from what we need to do. We're we're distracting ourselves about the deficiency of our relationship with the good Lord. Yes, I heard Father say this and that during the sermon, but did you know, and then we go off on tangents. Be good witnesses of Christ. And the only way we can be a good witness of Christ is to have him. First and foremost in our day and in our lives. God first, always first. And there is only one way to make him first in our day if we call upon him, and we call upon him with sincerity and truth. Words do not make a man holy. Words are just words. Neither do they make prayers. Words do not make up prayers. It's words with meaning from our heart, from a contrite and a humble heart, that make a prayer a true prayer. People think that If they say this one novena so many times that it's some type of magical recipe for what they want. And all they do is injure their relationship with God and their faith. Because they're in a realm of superstition. Is there anything wrong with novenas? Not at all. Novenas are good. The first novena was done by the apostles as they gathered around our Blessed Mother in preparation for that great feast of Pentecost. But when we put meaning to the words, if we call upon the Lord, are we really calling upon him? This is what I am talking about. How many times we go through, okay, let's pray the rosary, Hail Mary, Father, Grace, Lord, Thee, Blessed Lord, Dhamma, and we don't even think. We're not even thinking of the mystery, nor are we thinking of the petition 
to our Blessed Mother to pray for us sinners. We're asking the Mother of God to intercede for us in heaven to her Son. Or when we pray the Our Father, when we address God as our Father, that means I'm a child of God. Putting meaning in the words. So when our Lord says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, saying a word doesn't make you a child of God. What makes you a child of God is first wanting him and second, following him. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven shall enter the kingdom of heaven. What is the will of the heavenly Father? The will of the heavenly Father is that we deny ourselves, we take up our cross, and we follow Christ. Humbly. Contritely. Faithfully. So when we kneel and we pray at Mass, or when we come into the church, let us do so with that end in mind. You know, I'm always, I always think when I run across this gospel of that parable that our Lord spoke when the two men came into the temple to pray. The one went up front and said, Oh, Lord, aren't you lucky to have me? Look at how great I am. I do this and I do that and I do that. And I am so glad, I'm so glad that I'm not like that guy out in that back there. And the guy in the back kept striking his breast and said, have mercy upon me as sinner. The two men went home, but only one went home justified. And it wasn't the guy up front promoting himself because all he left was with himself. And when we leave with ourselves, we leave with a fallen, with our fallen human nature. But when we go and we have a humble and a contrite heart, That's when we open ourselves up and we leave with Christ. And when we leave with Christ, we leave with the Prince of Peace. And then we have an opportunity to become instruments of peace. And then we have that fruit to be seen by who we are and what we do. A peace, not the world type of peace, but a peace that comes from Christ and from Christ alone. That's where our Lord says, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine before men so that they might see your good works. Not words, but it's how we act and what we do, how we promote him. You know, we go back to the man in the back, the humble and the contrite man. What's a humble and a contrite man? A humble man is one who identifies himself as a sinner. A contrite man is the one who gives up his sin. Let's go of sin. Let's go of the jealousies and the contentions and the angers and the frustrations and the uncharities and the impurities and the unnecessary occasions of sin and grabs on to Christ and holds on to him fast and is willing to spend anything and use all their energy in order to have Christ more firmly in his grasp, in his life, in his day. That is what makes up a saint. Willing to sacrifice everything in order to have Christ, and to have his goodness, and to have his grace. And not justify the whims and wants of fallen human nature, and sacrifice that relationship that we can have with he who loves us so much and demonstrates that love if we but open up our eyes and through the eyes of faith see when we go to Mass. For the wages of sin is death. That's what sin has to offer. But the, gift, but the gift of God is life everlasting. That's what he has to offer. Let us go after him. Let us pursue Christ. Let us be faithful followers. Let's deny that self. 
that Christ tells us to. Let us take up our cross faithfully, not begrudgingly and make everybody else suffer because we complain and we throw around attitude. We take up the cross to be good disciples, good followers of Christ, instruments of his peace, and faithfully follow him, not just in good times, but all the time. And then we will realize our purpose. And what is our purpose, my dear friends in Christ? To be saints, plain and simple. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.